Jean-Claude, the uh, son of one of the great legends, Josephine Baker. Hey, uh, did you like uh, Lynn Whitfield's portrayal of your legendary mom on, uh, on TV last year? I haven't seen it yet. I know that it won many awards. I know that she's a very pretty girl. Of course, she's not Josephine Baker. While the movie was made and they come to my restaurant at table 10 to discuss about it, I was writing a very serious biography about Josephine Baker. She herself, during her lifetime, wrote five autobiographies. Right. She wrote, she, Josephine wrote five autobiographies. I mean, that's a lot. She kept rewriting them until the day she died, she was writing the last one. All wonderful, wonderful. You know, what does it tell us? It tells us that she was not happy with herself. They were suffering that she could not show until the end. After she passed away, seven books have been written, and I was, I didn't find the women I've loved, the women I've known, in all those things, in what she wrote here and there, I found something. So 20 years ago, I went on my own, 20, almost 20 years ago, and wrote a book. So I could not watch the Josephine Baker movie on HBO while I was myself, between the five books she wrote, the seven book literature and the thousand people interview, knowing what was the fact and not the fact, you see? Nobody is there to accuse or defend Josephine Baker. Her life speaks by itself, and it's fascinating. So when I will receive my book in two months, I promise, I have the, I have the cassette at home. I'm going to watch it with my brother, Jari, who is with me tonight. So another one of uh, Josephine Baker's dozen, uh, Jari, he's from Finland. Jean-Claude from France, but the kids that Josephine Baker adopted came from all over. But you see what I mean? The, the film was very good because many people in this country where she was born don't know Josephine Baker. When I opened my restaurant, people would come and say, is Josephine cooking tonight? <laughs> and that's not... That would be very difficult. Know, yeah, right. So I said, yes, in spirit. And, but you must... <laughs> because it would be too long to explain, yes. you know? But uh, what I want to say, I am not blaming America. She left in 1925 when this country hadn't found peace between colored people and white people. You know, I'm not blaming anyone. That's time, that's history. And Joyfin is part of history. And that's why it's so difficult to do a good story about Joyfin Baker. Was she, Jean-Claude, one question, let me take a commercial break. I asked BD, I asked, I, I'm gonna, if I haven't, I'll ask everybody. Was she, now she's preoccupied, now she's the, uh, the, uh, the toast of Perry, now she is probably the most, uh, 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 captivating entertainer in all of Europe during her, her heyday. Uh, was she also a good mother? Uh, well, you have to ask her, my brother. Too. All those show business people are the same. We are all the same. As soon as you are famous, you are divided between your audience, between your reader, if you have a famous writer, or just like you, monsieur, between your audience here, you know? So, yes, when they're at home, five minutes. They may be a good father or a good mother, but the rest of the time, they are thinking of a new role, of a new book, and that. So they are not people like, like normal people that we are. And I'm not blaming them, that's normal. I'm sure in all the time it was like that. How can they be 100% dedicated and good parents when million people want them? Good point. Chez Josephine is Jean-Claude's restaurant. Stop by when you're in town. We'll be right back with the... Yeah, I have a question for Josephine Baker's son. Um, Jean-Claude. With, yeah, with her... Jean-Claude. Uh, <laughs> with her being such a, a sex symbol and a pioneer of a sexual revolution with her banana dance and stuff, did that have any impact on your feelings towards a sexual relation? Did it cause you to become, like, squeamish or closeted or anything like that? Well, first, we never knew about Josephine Baker, our mother with the bananas. We never saw that. <laughs> she did wanted us to see that. Oh, that was in 1926. You see? How old was she when she adopted you, Jean? Oh, when she took you in? Uh, she was close to 50 years old when she decided to become the universal mother after having many, many reincarnations. You know, like everyone, she was a young girl. Uh, when she was 14, 15, she was a big star already on Broadway in Shuffle Along and Chocolate Dandies, which were black shows, very successful in those days. Then she went to Paris in 1925 at 19, didn't spoke a word of English. The same way I came to America and didn't spoke a word, I mean, she word didn't spoke a word right, of French. And, I'm, and uh, took Paris by storm, you know. And uh, six months later, she took Paris again by storm at the Folie Bergère with the banana dance and the rest was history. She was the first black sex symbol of this century. As we go to this commercial, <laughs> let's look at the legendary Josephine Baker and her bananas. Oh, tout le temps. 
Don't pull her. <laughs> Because they were intimidated. But on the other hand, Rain, vulnerable, yeah. young, pretty, why not? Yeah. Why How not? was, uh, was that? Jean-Claude? Terrify that we do drugs. Mm. Absolutely terrify. She sometimes suspected one of them. You know, I'm, I'm the oldest. So she said, go to him. And I'm sure he's doing drugs. She was absolutely panicking. And I discovered in writing a uh, biography that uh, once you have in Europe, you know, in 2500, they were cocaine was free. Yeah. And opium was uh, the great drug. Yeah. And uh, she was, she saw people. I've seen, she said, she would go to a place and see Jean Cocteau, who was rolling on the floor, dead with opium. I mean, dead, I mean, no one did lifeless and said please promise me you will never so do the hog yeah, she, she was, was oh, with it too. She obsessed was constantly telling us about the dangers of it and the pitfalls yes. of it and, and making sure that we knew yeah. this was out there bd incident bd hammond uh, uh, forget about uh my mother's keeper she's also written a series of uh children's stories the guardian stories the uh they come in this form they come on audio tape and she's also done the the drawing, so I guess this is available. Where can people buy this? Directly from me only, and your switchboard will have the number to order it, actually. That's oh. all been set up, okay. whether you're so aware they, of it they're or gonna not. Us, <laughs> they're going to call us? They're going to call us, and then we'll call they you? Will, they will give out the number that those can be ordered through. They can be ordered through Terrific. my own ministry. To, to Jean-Claude, uh, one question before fun. I take this break. Excuse me, BD. Uh, are, are you friendly with the rest of the 13? Of course, 13? I have 10 brothers and two sisters, and we are friendly all together. That was the spirit of Josephine, you see? Yeah. You ever have a reunion? Uh, you know. From time to time, yes. We were in Paris in February, and, uh, and one of our brothers is in Argentina, and he came to see us a uh, um, few months ago. And, you know, but that's the spirit. Josephine had a utopic dream, which nobody has done in this century. She gathered children who were abandoned who were of different race, color, and religion. And she wanted that we are brother and sister. So that's, I, I, that was her idea. I'd love to see a family family photo. Lightning, their, uh, their background so unusual. Jean-Claude, who runs uh, Chez uh, Josephine here in New York. Call for reservations. His book in February, uh, Josephine. Josephine, as he says, The Hungry Heart. Uh, BD, uh, The Guardian Stories, plus uh, she's also an accomplished uh, artist. You can catch her work. Tony's running the... Uh, the National Indian Gaming Commission. So when, uh, when the tribe is opening a casino near you, you're gonna have Tony Hope uh, <laughs> around. <laughs> Stephen, what's the name of that track again? Uh, Turfway Park Racetrack in Kentucky. Okay. Home of Thoroughbred Race. Oh, in Lexington or? Uh, no, Louisville? we're north, uh, up closer to Cincinnati. Oh, right. we'll, we'll look for you there. And Rain, we'll look for the Fresh Prince meets the Golden Girls. And the Hook Players and, yeah. And the Hook <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck to all you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.